Well, good evening and welcome to the Swindon campus here at Oxford Brooks University where I've been teaching today. Everyone's gone home now. I'm all alone. It's evening, Tuesday evening at Swindon and I'm all alone. Um, so I've been teaching today and it made me think that the f the, about the fact that this, this Sunday, Alison begins the first of a series of services on inspiration. And I suppose when you're teaching, you're trying to inspire people. And, and, and the, the services we're going to have coming up are about inspirational figures. So I believe um, Alison's doing the Dalai Lama. Then in March, I'm going to be doing Desmond Tutu. And, and so it will continue. But uh, inspiration is, is, a, is a funny thing. And here I am in a classroom, supposedly a place of inspiration. Though I seem to recall that when I was a kid, it wasn't always. And I remember the thing that inspired me when I was eight years old more than anything in school was the six million dollar man. Do you remember him? The six million dollar man, the bionic man. And as I walked to school, I would pretend to be him. I would imagine a world in which I was made bionic. And I even ran the credits in my head. I would be going, Kevin Watson, a boy barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make Kevin Watson the world's first bionic boy. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. Do, 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 do. And so I'd do this all the way to school, pretending to be bionic. And then I'd get there and, you know, maybe I, I remember the thing that I really didn't like, didn't inspire me at all, was, was maths. We had these maths tests, these times table tests on Monday mornings. And to get myself through them, I would carry on pretending to be bionic. But you couldn't be bionic in the same way in the classroom. You couldn't go Woo, and prance around like I did in the street. So you had to be, well, I thought more subtle. So I remembered the fact that the bionic man, he had a, a bionic eye and he would zoom in and you'd hear this noise. It would go So I'd be in the maths class pretending to be a bionic and kind of doing what I thought Lee Majors did in the TV show, which was kind of like this. And I was imagining that I was zooming in. But the teacher, I must have done it a lot because the teacher came to the conclusion that I had something wrong with my eyes. And the next thing I was, I was in an office with someone and they were saying, have you got a problem with your eye? And I remember I had to fess up that I was just pretending to be bionic. And it was quite embarrassing. And uh, anyway, that was what inspired me as a, as, a, as, a, as a child. But of course, I later put that into a service when I did a service in the Methodist Church a few years ago about heroes. And I was making the point really that that the people who inspire us are not really the superheroes. They're not the people who put their underpants on on the outside and fly through the air, all that. That's, that's great in comics and on TV and all that. But really, the inspiring people, the most heroic people, tend to be ordinary people who happen to do extraordinary things. And so my hope is that in, in these series of, of services that are coming up that are about inspirational figures, we're not just thinking about putting people up on a pedestal. We're thinking about inspirational qualities. And those inspirational qualities are in us too. We can and do inspire other people. That is a possibility, you know, we do that. We can do that in very small ways, in, in sharing a cup of tea, in a, you know, a few biscuits. We can do that just in saying hello sometimes. We can do that in lots of ways. So hopefully what we hope you'll get out of that isn't just, wow, aren't they great, but actually, What's great in you that you want to let out? So thanks for listening to this Tuesday Taster. I will now bionic my way home. Not sure about that ending. <laughs>